Okay, um, that's a very interesting question. You know, I uh, can I can I quickly to answer your question take a few more minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a pet theory. Uh, can I call you Minu? Or yeah, Michi, sure. Whatever works for you. Uh, sure, you please. Know, yeah. You know, I'll I'll tell you something that I believe in very 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 much. Okay, and it'll answer a fair few questions. It answered my questions when I was choosing what to do. Uh, I believe you know. I want to quickly do it. I normally call it ten lessons in ten minutes. I'll try and keep it ten lessons in five or six minutes. Let me see how best I can do it. The first is you need to tell your students to go on a discovery. I think we all need, and I've spoken a little bit about it. Um, you know, we need for our students and our friends who are listening in to actually understand where their strengths lie, where their weaknesses lie. They need to be honest with themselves. So go on a discovery is the first lesson of who you are. You must also make time for your passions. You know, there was a one time when I was growing up, and if you were doing engineering, you were doing you know a pilot course, or you were doing uh, MBBS, or those were the prescribed if you weren't doing that you were a loser you know and and whatever i'm up i'm a performing arts person you know um, i used to be a singer and a theater musical person blah 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 radio person but i made time for my passions and i think our students need to make time for their passions i know you are teaching them a certain something a certain curriculum but please encourage your students to spend time with themselves and make time for their passions because that is what makes them better more wholesome people i also like to believe that we as a as you know as people need to chase positivity we tend to be too negative in our outlook you know i i i often talk about the half full and the half empty you know is the glass half full or is the glass half empty we need to look at positivity will digital replace experiential that's a very negative way of looking at it i don't think it will it's a very unreal way of looking at it it will both exist but if we embrace both and create a fine balance it will take us to new heights now that's positivity chase positivity be a student of positivity now very importantly define the terms on on which you want to live life don't be don't say i want to be like samir because samir is someone you look up to of course but are you cut out to be samir are you cut out to be meenu are you cut out to be brian maybe maybe not so you you need to decide who you want to be define the terms of who you want to be and what are the terms you want to live on another very important thing is you know while we have curriculums and this might be slightly blasphemous me you know i know we have curated curriculums but i do believe one of the things that help that's helped me two things actually my next two points have helped me tremendously in life you know there is one kind of qualification or learning or education which you learn in institutions which you wear on your visiting card or you wear on whatever on your cv there's another kind of learning which is from life okay my father would always say to me talk to the rickshaw driver talk to the security guard talk to the person who who cleans your your home talk to the person who cleans your office these are people whom you will learn maximum from and he was so right i follow it i try and make conversations with everyone i meet because those conversations are not curated they are real conversations and if you listen sometimes you know uh, i suffer from this bimari of talking too much i need to learn to listen more to people and i make that my mantra to listen to people so be a student of life be a student for life i do believe that the moment you think you've arrived and i am the man and i know everything there is to know you're actually going south so you need to be very clear about it you need to be a student of life and for life you need to stay hungry i'm learning things even today and happily so in fact this lockdown so far it's a terrible thing we all know this for many reasons personal and professional but let me tell you that i decided as many other people have to make it work for me so i'm doing so much of stuff i'm learning so much more about not just my business but the world around me i'm spending so much time maybe on the phone or digitally with with people whom i have not had the time to and i'm learning stuff even this seminar that we're doing or webinar that we're doing I mean, I'm hoping to learn a lot of stuff, you know, as we go along on what it takes to communicate and things like that. So there's an art of staying hungry. One must constantly be hungry to learn. One must constantly be hungry to to up the bar, raise the game, whatever you want to call it. You know, know the difference. You want to set your value chain. I always say, and I want to tell this to the students: don't choose a career or a calling because of money. Of course, you have got to survive. Of course, money and sustainability is important, but instead of setting you know your aspirations on money set your aspirations on what you are made out to be 
and what will give you happiness and believe you me if you know they always say you if you if you do something you love you end up loving what you do and if you end up loving what you do the rest falls in line it will fall in line you will make enough money more importantly you will be happy and when you are happy doing what you do the results are always heightened so you got to know that difference and very importantly you need to choose something that you will enjoy the journey of because what is good enough to be a manager to be a general manager to be a president to be a you know to be a ceo what is good enough ceo of a small company ceo of a big company what you know we keep resetting our targets and it's a good thing it will always change what is important is to enjoy the journey enjoy the process and so to answer your question we know if i haven't already you need to be encouraging your students to become their own people you need to be in, of course you have a curriculum which you have to impart but i do believe while imparting that you need to keep all of these 9 to 10 points that i crafted in mind make the journey of learning happy i always say today if i were to and i don't mean to be advising uh, some of the kingpins of education like samir but but what i keep saying to myself that when i get involved and i'm very keen to like at all samir to get involved in education because anyway i, I don't want to get into storytelling but what i believe in our business and it's one of the questions i keep getting asked unlike in your regular qualifications that you yearn for i think in our business experience is very important so don't read into finality of percentage points but in a regular you know management course let's say 80% is on theoretical and 20% is on practical i'm don't read into the finality of the percentage points i think in the businesses we are talking about today if i were to do something i would flip that and i would say can 80% be practical or you know on job and can 20% be theoretical give or take it could be 75 25 it could be you know 30 70 40 60 whatever but i think the balance between theoretical and practical needs to be flipped in the businesses we are talking about so i hope i've thrown a little bit of life meno i can never be as good a teacher probably as you are and i don't know if i've answered your question but you know that's been the attempt thank you so much brian you're welcome you have answered much more thanks a lot samir thank you my pleasure madam